So we're nearly fully apart and done with this Hass VF3 1997 gearbox. Everything's stripped out, laid on the bench. Really uh, difficult pulley to remove. Shrink fit, took a fair bit of heat with a propane oxy torch. Got our gears there. This is the high-low gear shaft, selector fork, the gearbox housing, intermediate plate, the motor, a little bit dirty, but there's nothing wrong with that. And the oil tank there. So yeah, just time to sort out all the new seals. The um, air cylinder for the gearbox is on the table elsewhere, but like and subscribe to the channel to see all the videos, complete tear down and rebuild of this Hass gearbox. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the main gear assembly and shaft now, and get it installed back into the casing. So there's the main gears. Obviously these can stay together when they're removed. I accidentally pressed this one off. So that's back on there. Now we've got our main bearing, which is located in this housing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the bearing into the housing first and then I'll turn the shaft up and I'll put that in that way first, like so. And then what happens after that is the high-low selector assembly slides into there, that bearing locates into that hole there and obviously it's going to sit sort of somewhere like that where it goes up and down so i don't know the exact steps to put it back in but that's what i think is going to need to happen first bearing into the housing gear pressed down into the bearing then you put that assembly in we'll press that down with the shaft and everything into there so that should be fine. Then this bearing goes back over this end, if you remember right. And then on the end of that, which we can do after, was our um, little pulley. Obviously that just gets heated up ever so slightly and drops onto there. So I'll put your camera in the stand. And when we're pushing this bearing in, because we're pushing it into a housing, we want to make sure we're pushing on the outer race. So I've just got this bit of um, old metal bar there and I'll use that to push in. So I'm just going to do it on this press over here. square as a can and it's going to be a very light press because it almost wants to go in on its own anyway. Super light press. Almost slid in of its own accord. You can see there, that's the new bearing pressed in. See if on the other side, and you, you can see it's actually got that bit of movement. So you could almost, if you do align it perfectly, you could probably just push that in by hand. Now what I want to do is take the main gear shaft, sit that in. This diameter here is smaller. It's only sized for the bearing when you get down here. So this will slip in perfectly, and then it will be just be a light press just to get this piece in. So if I set this up here this time, so that we've got a clear drop through the bearing. Now we're gonna take that shaft, and you'll see it slips easily into there. So it's relatively loose there. And I'll just make sure I've got 
this straight eye eye. And we're centered nicely. Might want it going in wonky. So we've got our bearing pressed through there and you can see it just sits up onto that shoulder. So you don't need to worry about how far you press it. It will only go so far. And then you see it in there. Lovely job. Now, we have to keep moving this camera backwards and forwards to try and get you the best position to see what I'm doing. So the next thing I want to do is take the high-low gear assembly that we put together earlier. Obviously this shaft is attached, make sure that's still tight. Um, that's perfectly tight in mine. I've actually put the new O-ring on there already, but that could be left off for the moment. And now we want to slide this into the housing and seat the bearing into that part of the casting here. So we take the assembly, get the selector shaft through that little top hole. See what I'm gonna actually do? So I'm gonna take that O-ring, take that O-ring out, because it's gonna make it that little bit harder to push the shaft through that hole there. Take that through there. Okay, and that didn't need pressing in the press, so that is okay. You can see there, gears mesh together. And then obviously, if you selected the low gear, you can also see they're meshed together. This is going to be a little bit more noise at the minute because they're not, um, until they're held in their positions, they're a little bit loose and sloppy there. But you can see the gears will change. Now coming to this side of the shaft, you can see where we'd have our circlips, circlip and our O-ring in there. So that O-ring that I just removed will go back in here. But what I will do first, um, just trying to see what section, because I haven't, that is going to sit in there. Our cylinder shaft, when it goes to be reassembled, will actually sit Okay, so apologies for kind of having to cut the video there, but I was getting a little bit lost in what it was I was going to do for the next stage. So we've got the main gear in with a bearing, and we've got the high-low gear and bearing set up in there. Now the next thing to do is this bottom gasket and this V seal, V ring seal, has to go on before the air shifter assembly because it needs to be able to sit over the top of this plate. This cannot go on first because this won't fit. Now there was no gasket with this. Whether there was a gasket from the factory years ago when it was first fitted, I'm not too sure. Um, obviously there wasn't a gasket when I took it out. There was like a bit of sealer all the way around it. So I've just popped out because I realized I didn't have any. And in the UK, I picked up this. Uh, it may not be the best, but it's stated there that it's resistant water, transmission fluids, and antifreeze. Obviously 
are more interested in the transmission fluid. Yes, it's like a hydraulic gear oil that this uses, but that's gonna be as close as we get. So whether this one's to apply on both sides or just one, just one surface only, and then we can assemble. So that was cheap. That was like five quid from Houghton's in the UK. Obviously, if you're in the States, you can get something similar. Then we've got our V-ring seal there, which sits over the shaft, sits over the main gear shaft. And then the V-ring seal, the cut part of the seal, seals onto the end of this machine part here. So it just sits over the top. That part is flush. So what you want to do, what I'm going to do, is put the seal onto the shaft. It's a relatively tight fit. And I'm going to push it back a little bit. Then I'm going to use this plate to push it nice and square and nice and gently back. And I'm actually going to use the plate to almost push it flush, but not quite. So what I want to do is I want it to be a tight fit as and when we put it on. Now this fitting I haven't removed and it wasn't leaking. So I haven't, that's about the only bit I haven't actually taken apart. That and the two fittings off of there for the air because they weren't leaking. So I'm gonna quickly clean up the tops of the socket cap heads. And there's actually a little bit of Loctite in these. If you can see in there, I'm gonna clean up this Loctite and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've just removed as much of the Loctite as I can from there. Now this plate has six bolts, five are the same length and one is shorter, just that one there. So we'll have these at the ready. And we're gonna open our gasket sealer. And this one comes with a little nozzle, so you can actually apply it neatly. And then we're gonna put a small bead around the inside of the bolt holes, so remember not to go around the outside or it will leak through the bolt holes. So on the inside, and then we're gonna put another bead just around this rim here. It's gonna spill out a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. Squeeze it till it actually comes out. Right, so this is actually a clear gasket. I'm gonna try and do this. quite hard to squeeze out there because the hole is so small because I want to keep it neat it's made it quite hard to squeeze and again we come around here Okay, so you see there, 
It's had a nice size bead all the way around both parts. And we've got a seal just away from the bearing so that when I put this on, it will push against this surface and it will push in where it wants to be because I want it to be a tight fit because obviously that's going to stop oil running past that shaft and down into or onto the pulley and make it a bit of a mess. Put that on there, what I want to do is I want to get a couple of these bolts started before I touch down with the silicon or the gasket seal or whatever you'd like to call it so that I know I'm ready to go in square and then on these ones I'm going to put a small dab of Loctite on each one, not much Just a dab. Just take these first two back out because I forgot to put the Loctite on them. start doing this up nice and evenly Do them all finger tight at first. And then I'm just gonna nip them up because they're only obviously going into alley, so I don't want to uh, go too mad, over tighten them, strip any threads. So there we have it, there's that plate mounted on. You can see we've just got a slight squeeze of the silicon coming out around the sides, which is what you want to see. Okay, so now that that's done, we can actually go ahead and put this shaft on. We've got these tubes to go on, one there and one there, but we're gonna do them in a minute. Now, because of the orientation of the brass fittings here on the side I want to put this on that way so that they're not touching on the floor because remember we said before this side piece cut out sits on top of that plate there so before we do that you want to have installed your new o-rings which I showed you in the previous video you will need the piston assembly, your two circlips, and the rubber O-ring for the center section there. So first off, I'm gonna put one circlip on.
These circuit pliers aren't very good. I'm gonna go get another pair. Okay, so it's got a different set of circuit pliers because the ends on the other one were a bit knackered. So, we now have one circuit over the shaft. We're gonna put our O-ring on. Roll that into the groove there. Then we're gonna put our top hat on. Now this needs to be assembled so that, I'm trying to show you where it is, so that it's this way up because the very small inlet hole from this fitting is at the top here. If you installed it the wrong way and you installed it that way up, this o-ring would actually block that hole. So by putting it that way, it actually allows the inlet to be above the level of the o-ring. So we've got to make sure we put that on this side facing the gearbox. We're going to slide that on there. I'm just going to use a little bit of WD on my finger onto that o-ring. Slide that on. And we'll take our second circlip. Just put that over there. Push that into place without pushing the shaft. And make sure you are locked in so that isn't going to move. Because obviously if either of them circlips come undone, you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna have any gear changing capability at all. So make sure they are on there nice. That's all we need on the shaft. Let me take the camera out stand, give you a closer look. So circlip on the front, circlip on the back. Got a new o-ring there, and obviously you saw the o-ring that I put on the inside of that shaft. Now we don't need to use any sealant or anything around there because you've got a new o-ring in the top face and you've got another o-ring internally there. So this can be put straight on. So I'm gonna put you back in the holder. The eagle eyed amongst you will see that the VR0E is gone. That was so. Gives me a bit of space in the workshop. So again, I'm just gonna put a bit of WD on my finger and just lube up the O-rings. Probably better off with a little bit of grease or a little air toy or something like that, but this will do nicely. Then we've got our four long socket cap head screws here. And I'm gonna do the same again with a Loctite. Just gonna put a little bit on each one. Same as I had originally. Doesn't take much. Lock tight there. Then we're going to slide this over the top. When we get to that first O ring, you can see there, just going to try and put that on with just a bit of pressure from the hand. Obviously, the downside is that uh, that gear wants to push out, so you have to lean in and hold the gear selector with one hand. And push this on with the other hand, like so. Now you can put your socket cap heads in there. Now 
by hand, just gonna push this flat against there before I start doing these up fully because you don't wanna pull it unevenly and risk doing any damage or bending the shaft or anything like that. So just do them up a little bit at a time once they start to bite. And then we'll just nip them up. And that's that piece done. So we'll get you ready for the next bit and I'll bring you back. Okay, so for the next part of the build, we're back in the press and we've got the bearing to slip over this shaft. It goes all the way down. You can see the marks on the shaft there. So that bearing has to be pressed all the way down to this shoulder on this gear. Obviously, it slips straight over that. But we will need something to press down only on the inner race. Don't press on the outer race. And I'll just see if that bit of tube there fits perfect. So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to rest that there. Secure you guys back in the camera mount. And we'll press this bearing in. Again, make sure you're nice and straight on the shaft. If you're gonna use a bit too, make sure the ends are true. If you've got a lathe, you can put them in there and just true, true the ends up. If not, you won't be pushing square onto it. If it all looks good, just give it a light press. Slips on nice. Make sure you're bottomed out up against that shoulder. And there we go. So there's the two bearings fitted. And you can see that they're going to be level. That one's actually got a little bit of movement in it, but they'll be level because these two bearings sit into the recess on this top plate. So that's going to be next. I'm going to put the camera back here. And what I'll do is I'll get that top plate. I'll get that off of the press now get the top plate set up and ready with a bit of gasket sealer again, ready to put that on and put our O-rings in and our spring washers and put it back together. So let me bring it all back over here and we'll carry on. Okay, so the same as before, I've run a small bead of that gasket sealer around the edge here now. I don't really think it's as critical here because the oil level's not, it doesn't submerge the whole thing in oil. You're gonna get splashes so it probably wouldn't be too bad, but obviously for them splashes, I'd rather put a bead around it so it doesn't run out. Now we've got our top plate, or the gearbox to motor plate, all cleaned up. Now obviously it goes down, side down, and these here are the bits that feed our gears. So it orientates that way. You won't get it wrong because you've got the dowel holes in there. I'm gonna rest it on top, and the bearings locate into here, so you've got to be relatively accurate when you're placing it. It's probably not going to want to go down on its own because of the bearing fits. So you're going to have to give it a tap down. Make sure your dowel pins Doesn't take a lot of force. And then as soon as we're on there, we're taking our eight socket cap heads and we're gonna bolt it down.
I didn't lock tight these ones because these aren't hanging upside down like the others. And then once we're in place, I'm going to nip them down. Almost like a head gasket holder, rather than doing them all up on one side or one end in one go, we just alternate backs and forwards. check them all. I'm not doing any specific torque specs. I'm just tightening and guesstimating how tight I need to be. Okay, so they're on. Let's remove the camera from the mount again so you can see they're the eight socket cap heads. These are the ones that were all filled with gunk when we took it off. And then we've got our two shafts here for our bearings. And now you can see that the gears are no longer all grindy because they're actually sat in their proper locations. Now at this point, this is where I had a little bit of um, uncertainty about these spring washers, if you remember. So there's two for each bearing and they go into each other like that. So you've got two smaller ones onto the smaller bearing and then you've got two larger ones you can see there that sit onto the larger bearing. And they're there just to take up any end float. Then you want to get your two circuit clips, one large, one small. Let me get a different set of pliers. So we'll get the smaller one first off. Make sure I've got the right one. And just squeeze it up. Says. If it wants to go, just about, and just push it down into place, making sure that it is properly seated and then take the larger one and do the same hasn't quite gone in on the back edge. Let's see what's happened. The wave washer has actually gone into the recess rather than the circuit. There you go. Now we are in. Again, I'll show you. So there's our circlips 
You can tell when they're seated because the actual hole for the circlip pliers sits right in. That one's got a different type of ear, but the same, same effect. And you can see that that's actually into that back recess because that's what you have to be careful of, that it isn't seated and it can come out. Now this one sits the motor over the top, so it can't really go anywhere. Um, this one has a little top pulley onto it. And then we've got a small square plate that goes on. But that's the majority of that assembled. So what I'm gonna do now is just flip it back over. I'll look at what stage I'm gonna complete next and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've decided the next point of call is gonna be our small top plate here. Now this had, you could just see the remnants there, like a little bit of sealer around it. Again, it's not gonna to be too much oil splash from the bearing to concern about, but there is oil feed um, only from the filler into this one. So when you're filling it, a little bit of seal around here would be nice so that as it is draining in, it's not just gonna come out around the side of this fitting. So this is only held on by four socket cap heads around here. So these four here. So I've removed the hose because I'm gonna replace that. So we're just gonna sit that over the top. Just onto that sealant there. I'm gonna put our four cap heads there and then I'll just go about tightening these down nice and evenly again probably didn't actually need silicon around the outside of that section but it's not gonna hurt and I've done it now so we just nip them up haven't got to be tight There we go. Now I'm gonna get the new one of these out of the packet. I'm gonna take that out and we'll get our map gas. We'll warm it up ever so slightly and then we should just be able to drop that onto there. So let me get the new one out and get the gas set up and I'll bring you back. Right, so all I've done here, I've got a socket on an extension, slightly oversized, just gonna rest it on there. And then we're just gonna heat this. Remembering from before, it didn't actually take much to get this on there. So if I stand that there, I can just turn that. Shaft is at 16 degrees. Now 250. That should be enough. Just plonk that on there. You might not have heard me then because of the torch. I didn't um, expect that, but we had this heated. It was at about 250, but I expect I was getting a residual heat off the flame there. So I'd say we was at about 150 and our shaft was at 16 degrees. So that slipped over there nicely. And it obviously goes down and just bottoms out on the top of that shaft so it will only go so far you don't need to hammer it or knock it 
it went down, pushed, donk, into its slot. So we have another bit there completed. Just gonna turn this to make sure which we are, just make sure that that was sitting straight and it's not cocked or it will be going around obviously on the wonk, which we don't want. Okay, so let's just recap there. We've got everything put together inside of here. We've got our air cylinder and everything assembled underneath. We've sealed our sump plate on, our dry sump plate. We've got that out of the way. We've got our top plate here, ready for our hose to go on. Um, sorry, that's not the oil fill. This was the oil fill fitting, got that confused earlier. We've got our new um, encoder belt pulley fitted on. This is for the motor, which I'm gonna do that piece last. So bits remaining to do. I'm gonna flip this over now and we can refit our two tubes, one being the oil pickup, one being the oil drain. These both have new V-ring seals to go on as well. And we've obviously got the pulley to be heated and go back on, but I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna make that literally like the last thing that I do. Um, and I'm gonna have the motor put on there I have the whole lot stood the other way up. I'll put something on the floor here so I can really heat that pulley on its own and I can lift it um, just using a glove or something like that. So I can, I'll have the motor on the floor, I can lift it straight down, bump on top. And we shouldn't need to press it because I'm hoping I can get it hot enough that I can just lift it on to the shaft and then we'll give it a tap down with a, with a copper mallet and that should be enough. So let me have a little tidy up here of all these bits and pieces and I'll bring you back, but we're getting there. Again, sorry for the long video, but if you want to see every step that's taken to reassemble this gearbox and how it all goes back together properly, hopefully properly, then uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll bring you back in a minute.